Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors, 126-101 to 101 loss to the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, before we get into this game, I want to say, we sorry for the late pod, but it's, it's well anticipated because uh, we have the return of Riker Richard. Riker, Yay. welcome back <laughs> on the podcast, brother. Hey, it's good to be back. You know what, the one downside of Europe is that it's impossible to watch basketball every mm-hmm. game every raptors game starts minimum 3 30 a.m <laughs> and i can see why the league is having issues with you know spreading the brand overseas how mm-hmm. on earth are you supposed to stay up to the latest live basketball entertainment if you have to you know be awake into the the wee hours of <laughs> dawn to watch these games it's ridiculous it's impossible but i'm finally back on canadian soil ready to watch the greatest the greatest sport ever created by fellow canadian and uh yeah man it's good to be back well dude it's exciting unfortunately we don't have the greatest game to come back to a lot of players injured a lot of players you know out we played the philadelphia 76ers and it was a tough night for the raptors last night yeah back to back losses now um it hasn't happened a lot or actually this is the first time now i, I guess that it's happened in the the entire season well we beat the, the pacers raptors. the game before yeah, but this is the first back-to-back loss in, or was the last game was a win? I believe so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? My bad. First game back. Don't yeah. <laughs> don't fact check me too hard here. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we're losing, we're missing the star player. We're missing mm-hmm. arguably maybe the number two player on the team. You know, Kyle Lowry has been fantastic uh, in terms yeah. of dishing the ball, but he's correct me if I'm wrong, but he's been in a bit of a slump, you know, and he's also had injuries. So he's just coming back for the first game. Yeah. But I'd say one of the most consistent guys is actually, you know, Serge Ibaka or Jonas Valanciunas. They kind of go back and forth in terms of just being productive, playing good defense, right? So having both of them absent in a team against a team that big men is, you know, the reason that they're winning games it's difficult to come out in their home court and they're the the best home team in the league right now and, and get the W. Yeah, for sure. Well, with Jonas, obviously he had that thumb injury. He had a couple of up and down games before he got hurt, but him and Serge have been very consistent throughout this season. And obviously Joel Embiid for the Philadelphia 76 is one of the best you know, centers in the league, arguably the best center in the NBA. It's going to be tough to beat the Sixers when you have Greg Monroe is a great offensive player, but he's our third string big man, not the greatest defensive player. It's going to be tough to, really beat the Sixers when you don't have a, a comparable big man to go against them. We have our starting and backup centers out. So it was, it was going to be a tough uphill battle for the Raptors tonight, regardless, you know, with just with the injuries. And you mentioned it, Kyle Lowry, he's, you know, he's been hurt. He's been in and out of the lineup the past few games, but he's been great, you know, the past, the games before he got hurt, he played really, really well. Obviously, he's been, had an up and down season, but Kyle Lowry, 20 points tonight, five assists, six rebounds. Not the greatest field goal percentage, two for nine from the three point line. How how what was your impression of his game tonight? Well, he started strong. You know, mm-hmm. he came out ten points in the first quarter, but as Nick Nurse said after the game, he, he was definitely feeling that injury. He's got a bit of rust that he needs to shake off. He slowed down in the second half, mm-hmm. which was really when they needed him. But yeah, that's fine. You really have to take every Raptors game with a grain of salt, especially a game like this where, of course, Philadelphia is going to be one of the Raptors' biggest rivals. Mm -hmm. But you're playing a game where you want to rest Kawhi Leonard as much as possible throughout the season. You have two big men gone. You have your your number one or your number two guy, your number one point guard coming off of an injury. This game, you really don't care if you lose it, right? As long as you see the the fundamental things that the, the Raptors are working on that allows you to believe when you have a full healthy roster, you're able to win the game, right? Most definitely, and, and you met. Yeah, you mentioned I just, how. Co- I want to. I want to iterate mm-hmm. once more before we go to the next thing. I, I said that the number two guys was the tandem of Serge Ibaka and Jonas Valanciunas. I, I forgot about uh, Pascal Siakam. He's he's kind of mm-hmm. asserting himself as the number two guy. But uh, yeah. anyways, we we'll get back into whatever you were saying. Most definitely, because uh, you mentioned Kyle Lowry. The game as the game went on, they almost looked tired, so to speak. They you know they didn't have the kick. They they were fighting pretty well. Obviously, we were short handed and. It's not like the the final score is a bit in, unrepresentable of how the game went. The Raptors are in this game for a lot of lot of stretches. The Sixers just went on some gargantuan runs where the Raptors came back and fought back. So it wasn't a complete blowout as the final score might say. But the Raptors did play pretty well. And you mentioned Pascal Siakam. Been phenomenal this season for the Raptors. 26 points, 6 rebounds tonight for him. You know, 0 for 6 on the three-point line, but aside from that, had a phenomenal game against the Sixers. 
he's you know I've been on the All Star bandwagon. It's it we're not sure if that's actually going to happen, but he's been super impressive this season. What were your thoughts on his game last night? Well, he's a good player, mm-hmm. right? He's he's going to develop. I still don't think he's going to be an All Star. We've had that debate already, uh, but I, I was flipping through YouTube before we started this podcast, and I seen somebody uh, his video titled Pascal Siakam the best kept secret for the Toronto Raptors. But I don't think that's the case. You know, he's not a secret. I think the league, the scouts, everybody is aware of him. They're aware of his talents, his length, his athleticism, his ability to run the break, which he did exceptionally well this game again. He's turning into a really good player. And unfortunately, you know, this night he needed, you know, somebody else to step up and help him on defense, right? He's not going to be able to contain the entire paint down low. You said it yourself, Greg Monroe. He's a serviceable reserve player, but he's not a starting guy. So um, he had Pascal Siakam had a scoring explosion. That's great to see. But uh, for him to win, I think we need a couple more pieces out on the court. Most definitely. And Pascal Siakam, phenomenal defender he is. He's he's no match physically. You know? Not for Joel Embiid. He's not capable of guard. Yeah, he can't guard no. Joel Embiid. You know, he does a good job on Simmons. You know, he's more of a he's more of a wing defender than he is a post defender, in my opinion, just because he's quick and long and got that thin frame. So it, it was a tough night for on the defensive end for the Raptors, obviously letting the Sixers score 126 points. And Ben Simmons, you know, we also got to give credit to Ben Simmons. He had a very strong game tonight. Kawhi usually has his way with Ben Simmons. I believe in the first two outings, uh, Kawhi made him turn over the ball 18 times. That wasn't the case for Simmons tonight. He had 26 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. Only one turnover, so I, I'm sure he was gunning for blood and maybe was hoping Kawhi would be there so he could he could show ben him. Simmons but is a strange Kawhi story wasn't... to me because he's a guy that mm-hmm. he was a what 11 for 13 field goal and field goals made, field goals attempted, and yep. he's doing this almost every night. I'm pretty sure on the season he's shooting 58 percent, and yep. he usually he, efficient. he takes a very minimal amount of field like attempts per game. Right, so he's—I yeah. I don't know what he's actually averaging. It's probably less than twenty for sure, right? Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. he's a guy that can easily get thirty points per night. I mean, he's shooting eleven for thirteen. Okay, he's uh, well, he's uh, he's scoring sixteen points per yeah, game. So sixteen points, only sixteen, which is lower which than is I expected. Great because he doesn't try—he doesn't try yeah. to score more, right? He's content to mm-hmm. to to just pass the ball to uh, to let Joel Embiid shoot, to let Jimmy Butler shoot, which is great. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if this guy really tries to score. Right? He doesn't need to cut back his passing ability. He doesn't need to cut back his rebounding. He's a terror. He is an absolute terror in the league. So I'm surprised, really, that he doesn't try more often. Because I, I think tonight's game, this 26 points, was his season high in scoring. So it's kind of kind of yeah. crazy. But I, I want to talk, though. I think that the Raptors really could have the defining point in this game. Um, you know, anybody listening, you see the highlights. If you watch the game, re- the end of the third quarter. I think last 30 seconds, mm-hmm. right? There was a possession where they almost stripped the ball and it was a close game. I think it was within 10 points. I think it was seven points, actually, a seven point game. And uh, they they almost had the steal opportunity, but instead it turned for a recover, right? The 76ers recovered, made a three. Raptors missed a shot mm-hmm. the next possession. And then um, JJ Redick had like a, a fading, leaning three. Like he has some of these weird shots at times. So they actually yeah. turned an almost steal opportunity to bring it into a five point game to close out the third quarter into, you know, giving up two three pointers to end up the third, to the end of mm-hmm. third quarter. I think at that point, momentum was completely lost, right? And they tried to battle back in the fourth, but really you can never bring one possession down to, right? Could this determine the entire game? Cause you could play yeah. harder throughout the whole 48 minutes, whatever. But I do think that this was a big opportunity, at least that I saw that it could have been very different, right? If they had, if they had to successfully still on the ball instead of giving up a six point swing. No, I 100% agree. Because the third quarter, the Raptors were really fighting back, and they were they were grinding, and really, it looked like they were getting back into the game. You know, because the Sixers played a solid first half, and then you know the Raptors fought back and played solid. And then you mentioned it, the momentum just swung in that possession. Basketball is a game of runs. You know, it's a it's a lot of mental that goes into it. You know, you're feeling good, you're grinding, going into the fourth. If it was, it would definitely change the game if we changed that possession. But that's how it goes. You know, basketball is a game of runs. You know it's unfortunate that we didn't have Kawhi. I would have loved to see, because obviously when we last played the Sixers, Jimmy Butler just joined the squad. I mean, you know, we handled them pretty good. 
So I'd love to see a game closing out into Christmas with Kawhi. And what are your thoughts on the back-to-back situations? Because Nick Nurse said that maybe in January he'll start playing back-to-backs, but no guarantees, quote. Do you do you think he should be playing these, or should we just let him do it? It's really it hard to say. It's easy to say as a mm-hmm. fan, usually. Yep. Of course, your star players, the guys bringing in the money for the franchise yep. should be playing every game. Right? It's easy to say as a sympathetic person who understands, right? Somebody who has a background in playing sports, right? And an athletic person to say, okay, it actually is sensible to rest a an athlete, right? Because you you want mm-hmm. especially after being out yeah, for Yeah, this year. is his career. You want to you want him to have longevity in his career, right? But you don't want him to go mm-hmm. down early with a needless injury because you're riding him in a tough 82 game season just for the sake mm-hmm. of you know, winning a couple of extra games, they're still going to make the playoffs. They're still going to be a top four yep. seed and still the entire season doesn't matter. It only matters what they, how they perform the playoffs. Right. So it's irrelevant. He doesn't need to play. Right. But then another mm-hmm. piece is right. As a, as a fan that wants this star player to stay in the league or sorry, to stay on this team, then mm-hmm. it's, is it best to play him and show him how good he is, how many games this team can win or is it best to rest him because he wants to be rested? Or is it best to not let him rest because he wants to be rested because he doesn't want to commit too much to the Toronto, right, to the Toronto Raptors? It's really yeah. difficult to understand these little nuances. And you just have to trust, trust the coaching staff. You have to trust management. You have to understand that they're working through some sort of process because they want him just as much as we want him to stay. Mm-hmm. So hopefully yeah. the, the outcome will be positive. I don't mind because, you know, the Raptors are fun. They're fun with Kawhi. They're fun without Kawhi. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's 100% fair. And you mentioned they're fun to watch regardless. They always fight. Despite the score, this game is pretty competitive most mostly throughout. It's a very perplexing situation. Let us know what you guys think of that in the comment section below. Before we swing into the segments, I also want to mention Norman Powell. Ever since he came back from injury, he's been looking really good. He's making the right decisions. He's been... You know, he hit a couple threes tonight, which is exciting. He didn't hit them the past couple games. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Norman Powell, especially where CJ has been really struggling as of late. If Norman Powell, as obviously we get back healthier, Norman Powell can steal those CJ minutes for the most part. I'd be, I'm a huge Norman Powell guy. I'm happy that he's had a few games now where he's really shown that he's, he's maybe not lived up, you know, living up to the high contract he's got just yet, but He's playing like a guy that deserves to be in the league, deserves to be in the rotation. Fair enough. All right, bring us into mm-hmm. the segments. All right, tonight, <laughs> the Kawhi you do him like that. Play of the day. It's going to our guy Kyle Lowry. He, uh, you know, There's a few nice plays tonight, but Kyle Lowry hit a half-court shot. I believe it was to end the half. So, you know, if someone's hitting a half-court shot, it's, it's going to be the Kawhi you do him like that. Play of yeah. the day. You know, you, why you got to do him like that to end the quarter, Kyle? Bank no? shot, though. Doesn't count. Doesn't, doesn't count, count unless well, unless he dude, called it. Counts for three points, it. brother. <laughs> you, you know Kyle Lowry was out there calling that as uh, as soon as it left his hands. <laughs> all right, that's a good one. Um, next play, not all can be the Kawhi well, doom. Yeah, not all plays can be the Kawhi doom like that play of the day, and some just make you say, "Oh, geez." Tonight, do you have, do you have any OGs in in mind specifically? Nope. Do you? Nope. So we should probably pause <laughs> this podcast. Um, okay, we're back. We're back. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. So, um, Ben Simmons, un- <laughs> uncomfortable with a call made by the mm-hmm. uh, the referee, decides to sit down in the courtside. If you follow basketball forever, that's my my second favorite basketball content uh, media source behind the Rappers Digest. Um, yep, and Courtside Connect. Exactly. My third. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's basketball. For, my third favorite. Anyways, he sits down. Uh, he sits down courtside and then gets teed up for sitting down courtside. Um, yep. which that, is, that was a wild moment. It's it's weird. Was... You don't see it so often. You could see that the girls he sat next to, two two cuties, they were they were excited <laughs> that uh, you know he he they got that little moment in the spotlight next to a, a superstar. But yeah, oh geez, what are, what are you doing out uh, there, Ben Simmons? Yeah, I was surprised they teed him up though. You know, because you saw that you you you've seen people you know in games do more just demonstrative things than sit down courtside next to next to. I was pretty happy as a Raptors fan. Obviously, we get the extra free throw out of it. But when it happened, you know, it's it was, really it definitely made me say, "Oh, geez." A technical foul. It's it. It really oftentimes it's however, 
um, patient the ref the referee is feeling yeah. because you know they're constantly being harassed Kyle by Kyle mm-hmm. Lowry mainly. Yeah. Um, every time that they make a call, so they're used to complaining. It just really depends on when their nerves are struck and when they decide to to actually blow the whistle. So it was a weird one. I don't think it was deserved, but whatever. Mm-hmm. That's. A, Yep, definitely made us say OGs, even if it took us a couple seconds to remember it. Uh, (laughs) And uh, finally, the infamous, the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award. Do you you have one specific in mind? Yeah, you you mentioned him before we started the podcast. You said, you know what? CJ Miles is the worst player in the league. (laughs) And uh, probably true. You know what? It seems like some Raptors come to thrive and some Raptors come to die. And I think CJ Miles' career... (laughs) ended here and in, in this team which is unfortunate but uh you know yep. he's he's just lost his place in the league yeah whenever we we talk for people that don't well obviously you guys don't know before the podcast Riker and I usually talk it's usually a little bit more blunt than uh than we like to put it on the podcast we like to keep it you know remotely positive but you you put it as as a bit more bluntly than I try to put it on the pod <laughs> he's been really bad you know maybe not the worst player in the league that might be a hyperbolized but he, he he had one three tonight, but he's supposed to be our three point shooting guy. He's supposed to be the guy that strokes those threes down, even if he does nothing else. You know, he can't even do that consistently, even the open ones. So CJ, because he's not very good in any other areas, in my opinion, but <sighs> CJ's got to be better. And hopefully Norman can steal up his minutes. Even Boucher, you know, Boucher looked pretty good in a couple games. Wasn't great in the minutes he, six minutes he played tonight. Four fouls and <laughs> Boucher had four fouls and two turnovers in six minutes <laughs> that's you know that's d-league uh that's d-league stats right there d-league mvp right no it's lorenzo's the real mvp out here but you know raptors it's a it was a tough night tonight it was pretty competitive we didn't have all the guys we didn't have the whole squad but going into the christmas break the, we're, we're looking good we're still sitting at the top of the east unless the the bucks are right on our heels maybe they've caught up by now but you know Riker, yep. Raptor land is good. You missed the past few weeks of games, but the Raptors have been nice. You know, I'm happy. 25 I'm happy. and 10. Can't complain. Can't complain at all. Let us know what you guys think of the Raptors this season, this game going, uh, this game against the Philadelphia 76ers, your takeaways, takeaways on Kawhi, all that cool stuff. We're happy to have the the duo back together. You know, we're Riker's back home on Canadian soil. I'm finished all that exam season stuff, and we got a lot of cool stuff coming for you guys in 2019. So stay tuned to the channel. Stay tuned to the Instagram. You're the best for listening this far. Mm-hmm. You know the Instagram, Twitter, all that cool stuff. Check that out, Riker. Any any last words? Um, 25 and 10 can't complain. <laughs> 25 and 10 can't complain. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers. Cheers.